Hi guys. It's early in the morning right now. Wolfie is watching his show. I don't know if you if you guys could hear faintly his uh, cartoons sound. And then I hope the dishwasher is not too distracting. I tried to look for the pause button, but I couldn't find it. So I'm just hoping that the microphone will help a lot to eliminate that noise. Anyways, I have a couple planned chores that I want to do and I figure I'll just do them while chatting with you guys, just kind of hang out. Uh, to be perfectly honest with you, I feel super lazy this morning. I uh, haven't even washed my face yet. So this is kind of how I have my coffee because I don't really have time to just sit down and have a cup of coffee and it just gets really cold. So we always just keep mine in a thermal, thermal, um, thing and then I can just sip on it throughout the morning so it stays warm for me okay so today I plan on doing I think one two three four th uh, four things um, I got a couple of Hoyas in the mail this is a Hoya Macrophylla Snow Queen I don't know if you guys know that it was on my actually 2021 wish list plan list um, but I was really hoping for a much splashier one uh, so uh, this one is not quite as splashy. I hope that when it puts out new leaves, it will be splashier. But it's still a very beautiful plant and uh, super huge leaves. The seller, her name is Erica Stewart. She's an amazing Hoya seller in Canada. She has so many varieties. If you guys are in Canada and you're looking to uh, increase your Hoya collection, check her out. On, you can find her on Facebook. Erica Stewart. I will put her name in the description box below, but she's one of my like, uh, what's the word called? The suppliers, I guess. Uh, so she grows these and um, Coco has chips and perlite and um, they grow so well in there, but the leaves are quite soft now and I think really it needs watering. Uh, two other kinds of microphylla grows really well in LECA, so I want to change this one into LECA medium today. Um, yeah, and the other Hoya that I got from her is this one. It's a no ID, but it's very beautiful. Uh, I love the splashes and how silver it is. It's just such an adorable little Hoya, but also um, it's in this beautiful medium, which I think I will eventually try to uh, use myself. But at the moment, I just have too many things to care for, and I don't want to be behind watering on these guys. So I want to change this one into um, just sphagnum moss. So we got that that I want to do. And then the third task that I want to do is um, I want to propagate my uh, variegated string of hearts. It's very, very long, but my pot is not very full. Um, last year, I had attempted to propagate a fuller pot. So I had propagated like maybe seven pairs. And as uh, they were rooting, it was my brother's birthday and he had just moved back to Canada and he was uh, in, uh, trying to add on to his house plant collection. And I uh, gave that to him as his birthday present and it's now grown into a very beautiful full pot of variegated string, string of hearts. He's been bragging about it and I've been really envious so I think it's time for me to do it again. And how I did it was I, I propagated his, I'll show you guys in the video how I, how I do my propagation but this is such an adorable plant that I would really love to have a fuller pot of. Yeah but it's just like super long which I love that look too, so I won't be taking too much of the length. Anyway, so that's that one. And you guys know, I've mentioned in my previous video that I would really like to have a fuller pot of um, Hoya Bretonii. So I kind of figure I'll just cut mine and uh, pop it back into this Leca medium and let it root in there and grow in there. Hopefully it takes root. Uh, and then I can have a second plant of this. So that's what I plan on doing. But Bretonia is such a beautiful plant. I think I should put it under more intense light so it could have a more like beautiful tan. Um, yeah, so those are the four things that we're gonna do. 
I'm gonna work on the microfiber first. Mm, and I'm gonna put it into this thing. I save all my glass containers, jars for my plant projects. Yeah, this medium is so, I really think that it is super good for Hoyas because Hoyas are apophytes and they just grow, uh, they grow their roots into trees, things they could climb on. So the airier the mix, the better for them. So I feel kind of bad changing the medium into Leka. And like, it's always really, she mentions that one of the benefits Erica Stewart, she mentioned that one of the benefits of using this is like not having spill soiled everywhere that you have to clean up when you're caring for plants and that's really a big bonus. There is someone on Instagram, I think his name is B, I'll check it and put it in the video, uh, B .C, B Chan or something. Uh, someone asked him what medium he uses for his aeroids. And he had a sh really short answer for um, if the aeroid is uh, an apophytic um, aeroid, then he uses sphagnum moss. And if it's a crawler, um, then he will use soil and potting mix. And that makes a lot of sense to me. For, for things like Hoyas, it kind of, um, when it just, the roots are born to um, just in nature, to just climb up trees. They don't really need the, they don't really need the, uh, I'm just gonna wash it a little bit. Um, the soil, right? So beautiful roots. There are a few ways you could work. So I'm gonna use Leka for this one. I will actually prefer uh, smaller pebbles, but this one I got from Amazon and it was like super cheap for a huge bag. Um, because I am with Wolfie, so I am really a lot of times relying on um, Amazon for a lot of things, so I don't have to like keep him in the car. Mm. Um, so I put a little bit layer of Leka at the bottom, and then I put the plant in, and I'm fill filling it up. I really, uh, oh, was that, I was saying that there are a couple ways of working with Leka. You, I like doing this one this way so then I could just see the roots. But you could use also a net pot and uh, put it into a cash pot and then fill the water in the cash pot. And, and then I just fill a little bit of water uh, to the bottom. So this one's done. And now I want to take this guy out of the, the cup and uh, I don't have a um, pot that's size appropriate to this one except for this one, but it doesn't have a drainage hole. So I'll have to remember it when I water it to be more conservative and not let water sit on the bottom for this plant. So the roots are not as big in this one. Uh, that's okay. I'm sure it's gonna root more. Did I mention I'm gonna use sphagnum moss for this? I'm sure it'll be okay. And same thing. Um, so my sphagnum moss, I had already moistened it. Um, but if you were to do it, I would moisten it first and squeeze out the liquid and, and then fluff out the sphagnum moss so it's not packed in way too tight. And same thing, you put a layer and then you put the plant in. But I would be quite gentle when you put it in because of the new roots. You don't want to damage it. I used to make this mistake of um, forgetting how tender the roots could be uh, with my anthurium when I repot it. And I kind of end up, especially anthurium roots, they are um, not as bendable. They're thicker and easily, like more easily breakable. And I was potting it a little bit rough and then breaking the roots during repotting then like caught which led to some root rot so now I much I am much more gentler when I work with um, roots 
All right, so I've potted this one up. And uh, I usually just put a little bit more water in there to moisten it up. And because it's already rooted, so I will wait for the leaves to be soft before I water it again. So this is the second thing. I've done this now. Um, the third thing I'm going to do is I actually, I'm actually going to um, take a cutting here. I think I'm just going to take it from right here. So this is the cutting that I took. I'm actually going to dump this whole thing out. It's been a long time. I just also want to check. So you can see the roots are doing really, really well in the leka. Um, but there's also some, some root rods as well. Anyways, I'm going to put this in this back in um, and then just kind of put this one in as I fill in the leka and hopefully it will just root. Can you guys see? So this is the original plant. It's still bleeding some of that um, sap. And then this is the cutting that I have just put in. Yeah, I hope that it will grow into a plant and make a fuller pot for me. So because I noticed that there's a little bit of rot in the bottom of the, the plant, or, um, in the going forward, I'm gonna be a little bit more mindful of waiting for it to be really more dry before I water the plant again. Hi. I just have one thing left to do and then I will play with you. So the last thing I'm gonna do is uh, make my string of hearts propagation. I'm just, I empty out my dates from this container and I'm going to fill it with sphagnum moss. Like so. Where are you putting away? Sorry? Where are you putting away? I am. I just have one last thing to do. Watch this. Lecker. Yeah. Um, so one tip I think it's just from for me personally. When I propagate string of hearts, I make sure that they've already been watered. Yeah, and the leaves are firm before I take cuttings of it. You don't want them to be underwater, limp, when you're trying to propagate. And it kind of, um, so you're not starting off from a really good place. And ideally, I would like to take um, bigger leaves for propagating, but because it's already gotten so long and the bottom uh, portions of the plant is um, smaller, but that's okay. So I'm just going to take these guys and I'm going to use the butterfly method of propagating these guys, which means to like uh, get a bigger pair for you and show you. So each pair is a butterfly and then uh, each pair has a node in, um, in here. So um, technically they could all root into a plant. So I'm just gonna turn them into pairs. You get these guys and then you uh, put it in the moss. So I'm just gonna do that with the rest of all the string of hearts. Got this black coat Ah, of the water. Thank you. Let's go. 
All right, so I've cut many, many pairs. I have lost count and po pop them into sphagnum moss. And then I'm going to moisten the moss a little bit. And I'm actually going to not tightly close, but kind of close this lid. Um, I have noticed in my past propagation experiences with string of hearts that for a plant that really loves to dry out, it actually really, really loves humidity when it's being propagated to root. So I'm going to close it and then open it every couple of days to let air out um, and then just let it, let it grow in there. Okay, I'm done my plant uh, chores for the morning and now I'm gonna go play Wolfie. Can I come say bye? Yeah, come. Say bye, my mama's gonna play with me now. You wanna say bye? Bye. Okay, bye guys. See you again later.